हेलो 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 वेलकम एवरीवन टू टाटा स्टील चेस 2022 राउंड सेवन दिस इज सागर शाह एंड वेलकमिंग ऑल ऑफ यू टू अ सेशन फिल्ड विद लॉट ऑफ एक्साइटमेंट लॉट ऑफ लर्निंग लॉट ऑफ एनर्जी एंड इट्स गोइंग टू बी ग्रेट फन सो थैंक यू ऑल फॉर ट्यूनिंग इन एंड ऊप्स ऑल गुड a lot of people are asking what has happened to daniel dubov and what has happened so let me just first tell you guys what we have right now this is the standings after round 6 <clears throat> we have magnus carlsen at the top along with vidit and mamedyarov if you see anish giri is already on 4 points but next to him it said 4 out of 7 not 4 out of 6 why so the reason is that there has been something related to covid which has happened right now and if you look here this is the thing which the organizers have spoken about daniel dubo will not be playing the seventh round of the tournament due to a covid 19 contamination in his inner circle the tournament organization after consultation after consulting the chief arbiter has asked dubo to play wearing a face mask in order to protect his opponent anish dubo did not show for his match which means that he has lost his game by forfeit dubo has indicated that he refuses to play wearing a face mask as a matter of principle dubo himself tested negative in a quick scan test he has also undergone a pcr test of which the result is likely to come this evening so because dubo did not want to play with a face mask he has decided to forfeit the game and that means anish won the game and has got the full point here <coughs> today is a big day because pragnananda takes on magnus carlsen vidit is up against jordan van forest uh, and also in the challenger section Arjun Erigesi is leading by one and half points. He beat yesterday Surya Ganguly. Today he is up against the second seed of the event, Juma Baev. So it's a big, big game for him. And also uh, Surya is up against Murzin Volodar. So that's also an important game. So I guess we have it all sorted now, and we are all ready to begin with the games. kind of chess drama but a uh, small one yeah this one i think will uh, will die down so let's get it cracking also i did uh, my test here and the result was positive for uh, me so i'm actually also kind of home quarantined here along with amruta so <laughs> yeah i mean take care guys it's uh, not easy um, but i think this live session is what i was looking forward to and we'll have a good time today so the game between pragnananda and magnus carlsen started off with d4 by prag i think this is the first time they play over the board they did play odd light prag has also played in a simul with carlsen but this is the first time they are playing over the board in a classical game and e6 was played prag went knight f3 and now magnus took on c4 so what is the name of this opening dhruva jyoti says anish played a mind blowing game yeah he made first move and then dubo didn't come Yeah Sachin thank you for your message. Yes it's called the queen's gambit accepted when you take on c4 it is qga if you don't take on c4 and you play knight f6 this would be qgd queen's gambit declined. So take on c4 e3 now the threat is to take on c4 here bishop takes c4 a6 by magnus bishop takes c4 knight f6 and now castles so <clears throat> black went for the move c5 
B3 by Prague and a very interesting decision by Magnus Carlsen here and this is something which we would never understand as such if we don't think about it a little deeper. The point is that he played a move B6 here. By the way, on the mini board here, sorry, here, I have uh, with its game here. So you can just check it out. We will come to that game as well. But what about this move B6? Why did he not go B5 when he can actually do that? Can anyone tell me in the chat? What is the reason that Magnus Carlsen went for B6 and not B5? <laughs> Tripath says your act in the trailer was amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's very nice that Samai will be back soon and there will be on 25th a big, big video coming up from his end. He always uh, comes up with something huge, which is very nice to see. Ranjan K. Ranjit says, Sagar, why even I got tested positive, was waiting to watch you because I was very bored in the quarantine. Oh, fantastic. Very nice to know and take rest. Just enjoy. Uh, yeah, also I have clean shaven today. So everyone who was telling me shave karo, shave karo finally. I have to now do my haircut. So then I'll be completely normal. Asim Khan says C5 weakness. Uh, Asim, not C5 weakness. I would say the main reason why B5 is not really the best is because after I go back, let's say on E2 and let's say you play Bishop B7. Now, white has a very strong move. Let's see if you can find it. This is my first question for the day. Can you find it? Uh, white to play. What does white do here? White to move in this position. What do you do? Yes, it's very important now and you will understand why b5 is not the best move. You have to take advantage of that move here and the move that is very good is a4. And now you understand why Magnus didn't want to go b5 because you really can't hold this structure. You don't want to take on a4 because then your a6 pawn would be weak. So you have to push b4 and once you push it, a square has become weak now which is that square and by the way all the people who wrote c4 well done uh, sorry a4 well done here a lot of you have mentioned it so congratulations to rohan mittal anish chaudhary shivank prathas prathas got talent mayuresh prathamesh jatin disha shashank and aman let me get also the chessboard here so that while you are guessing the moves, you can see it. Yeah, there you have it. Yes, c4 is a weakness here. That is exactly what I was looking for. The c4 square is now weak and the knight goes from d2 to c4. So this is a very important concept that you should remember that if your knight is not developed on b1, like if, if you have not played knight c3, then b5. So let's say here if white plays knight c3 then b5 makes a lot of sense because then if when i go back now a4 even if you play b4 then knight b1 d2 c4 is going to take like you've lost two tempi there but because prague started with b3 and now b5 bishop e2 bishop b7 now a4 makes a lot of sense right so I hope you get this point and that you have understood this, this key moment. Yes, by the way, uh, 
if someone can write down what i had just mentioned at the start about dubo versus anish you know uh, then i'll pin that message what happened there actually dubo's team member or in his inner circle got covid and that is the reason why he was asked to play with a mask but as a principal dubo doesn't like to play with the mask so he forfeited his point he did not come to the game b3 was played and now just to uh, also see on our chess base board how many times this position has actually occurred after b3 you will see that it is not the most popular line here it although it has been played 1100 times in this position d takes c5 is the main move also a4 is another move bishop b3 is another move and also queen e2 oops sorry bishop b3 and queen e2 so b3 by prague b6 by magnus and now prague went bishop a3 wow and you know carlson himself has played this also adiban has played it harshit raja has played it asua by eva bibi sara has played it very interesting and the time will reveal as to whether Prague was prepared for this or what. So if you see b3, b6, Prague took 7 minutes to play bishop a3. Now, it may be his preparation, maybe not. Generally, 7 minutes is a lot of time to be uh, taking if you, are, if you are prepared, I believe. So maybe he was not prepared and he found it over the board. Okay, thanks. Maybe I'll pin this one. Oops. Right. So, bishop a3, knight d7 was played. The threat was d takes c5 and isolating the c5 pawn. d5 was played here. Very interesting move. e takes d5. Bishop takes d5. Rook b8. Bishop b2. Bishop e7. So, an interesting moment here is that Magnus did not take here and got the bishop pair advantage because the queen is very active. And this is again one of those moments where you are ready to give up your bishop so that your pieces are on good squares. Knight c3, castles and queen c2. If you take here, I'll take with my knight and my knight is beautifully positioned. With my rook coming to d1, my pawn coming up to e4, my bishop looking here. And I, as they say, even though the bishop which you gave up was an important piece, it's all about what remains on the board, not what goes out of it, which is important. So here, white is better. So b5, he went rook fd1, okay. Although <clears throat> also possible was rook ad1. You know, the reason why I think rook ad1 also could have been nice is because I eventually want to put my pawn on e4 and the other rook will come in handy on e1. Uh, but Prague decided rook fd1, maybe he's looking at some a4 breaks later on and wants to make use of his a rook here. Queen to c7 and this is the position that is there on the board right now. Uh, and what has happened is 50 minutes for Prague, 54 for Magnus Carlsen here. It's a very, very exciting game, I must tell you. You know, for me personally, it is like when I first saw Pragnananda playing, I think it was at the World Juniors, both Prague and Nihal in 2014. Prague was what? He's 2005 born. He was nine years old. He was rated around 1900 or 1800 at that point. And now he's playing here against the world champion Magnus Carlsen. So it's a big journey that he has and uh, you know we've been following and today he's playing the world champion and I'm commentating here. So it's a, it's a very exciting feeling. But at the same time, I think for Prague it's a natural progression as a player. He has really, really... Uh, worked hard for this and he's managed to um, 
you know reach here okay so the position is interesting after queen c7 i want all of you to guess what would pragnananda play here it's not like clear as to what his plan should be because his bishop is here well placed you can't bring it back the knight if it moves then maybe black will take this and rook takes then he will push away the rook with bishop b7 so you don't want to move the knight so what should you do rajam shankar says bishop e4 interesting suggestion rajam uh, and if i take then you will take with the knight when your knight is well placed possible Rook AC1, Harshit, I like your suggestion. Target JE also, Vaibhav Dubey, Shobhit Jain. I like this. So, Rook AC1 is also a nice move, putting your pieces in the center. And that's that looks nice. Knight E2 was suggested by someone, but I don't like it because after, let's say, take, take, Bishop to B7. Let's say you go back, now Rook D1. Then... I don't know, bishop f3 is also possible. You can also play your knight to f6, maybe bishop f6. I think black has equalized here. So Prague is not going to play knight e2. That is for sure here. Oh, he's played his move. He played a4 here. Interesting, interesting. But, you know, you know, it's very, very interesting that he did this. Because now, imagine, okay, Magnus will go b4. I think he will play this. Prague will either play knight e2, knight e4, knight b1. These are the three options here. But imagine, let's say he goes knight e2. Now, knight takes d5, rook takes d5, and bishop b7. And here, guys, there is a very interesting opportunity for white, can you tell me what should white play? Let me see how many of you are able to understand the little bit of imbalances in the position. White to move. <clears throat> Rushiraj Parek, you want to... Sacrifice with rook d7, maybe not good, yeah? After queen d7, what's your plan? Kylo, very good. <coughs> so, let's, let's have a look at what are the moves that are being suggested by chat. Rook h5, I understand that's the most popular move. You want to put your rook here and you want to threaten checkmate in one. Guys, always remember that whether your opponent can easily just deal with your threat or not and here after g6 i think black has dealt with the threat pretty well and black would be doing quite quite well in the position so rook h5 is not a good idea um although all of you have mentioned it i really really want that knight f4 and i think a uh, few of you kylo manthan kapoor vinit h and tripti bansal <coughs> well done you guys knight f4 is the move and my point here is that after take take now if you look at this position this knight is an absolute monster in the center first of all it's hitting both let's say you go queen d8 trying to uh, defend your bishop then what i would do here in this position is i would bring my rook from a1 to d1 and I would just tell black that yes, I'm an exchange down, but look at my compensation. My knight is superbly placed in the center, looking at all these squares. My bishop is on the long diagonal and my other knight can join in the game at any point. Maybe I'm looking at 95 options here. So this is definitely, I think, something that Prague is thinking about this b4 b4 and then go knight e2 knight f4 <coughs> because say if you play this knight e2 and here if you don't take this then my knight is coming to f4 and if you take oh uh, if you take here 
and I take here and then bishop b7 and then you move the rook away then black is doing very well because first of all black has the option to take here and let's say if you play rook d8 and knight f4 then after knight f6 I think I don't have control of the d5 square all my pieces are well placed as black and I think black is doing very well in these positions so you must must sacrifice this exchange with knight f4 when the game is going to be very exciting why not rook f5 says yash shukla but uh, yash the main point is that see the rook is a little bit misplaced here and if i can hit you with g6 that is one option i was also wondering if knight f6 is good but i'm a little bit scared that you might take take and sacrifice an exchange here but maybe that should be also okay knight f6 oh, oh knight f6 problem is bishop f6 bishop f6 rook c5 hitting the queen okay okay so i can't do that but maybe he can go something like queen c6 so that this knight cannot move there is a mate on g2 and this could be one way to to continue this is going to be very exciting let's come back to this game in a bit now let's go to vidit gujarati's game versus jordan van for east uh, and um, complicated game let's let's take it from the start yeah so vidit gujarati is playing against jordan and vidit has the black pieces jordan <coughs> is supposed to be one of the most creative grandmasters along with daniel dubo uh, and you know in many ways many of the ideas that were that they came up with during the world championship match were something that jordan had come up with so d4 knight f6 c4 e6 knight c3 bishop b4 queen c2 this is known as the king's indian defense castles a3 bishop c3 queen c3 and now black played the move d5 Mr. Great123 says, how many elos would Prague gain if he wins this? Maybe around 6 or 7. Ah, Shivang Pathak. Also, Van Forest is the defending champion. True. Shivansh, Pat Shivang Pathak, Snehashish, Mudit, Rick, Jena, Samarth Gandhi, Chessmate, Achutan, Sakar, Kaushik. Everyone was not sleeping. All of these people caught me when I said Kings Indian. And they said, this is not King's Indian Saga. This is Nimzo Indian. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. And uh, so just so that you know, if I go G6 here, this would be the King's Indian. But I went E6. And that is, I mean, G6 starts start of the King's uh, Indian. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the main reason why I make all these errors is to check whether you all are attentive or not and uh, this time you guys were attentive so queen c2 castles a3 bishop c3 queen c3 and in came d5 knight f3 <coughs> uh do you remember this game this crazy game between whom was this People are saying cover up, cover up. Maybe it's the first time, yeah, you guys have come to, to Chess Base India uh, commentary. Which game was this? Yes, Pragnananda versus Rapport, exactly. It was Rapport versus Pragnananda. Patrick, bro, you are right. Uh, yeah, d4, and so but here, Van Forest went for quite a like a quiet move with knight f3. With it, now took queen takes, and here is an important moment that you guys need to think. Black has you know given up the center, and white really hopes to play e3, bishop d3, castles, b4, bishop b2. So if I can get like e3, bishop d3, b4, bishop b2, castles, and then rook d1, rook c1, I would have the bishop pair, I would have space. 
So what is the move that Black is looking for in such a position where he can gain some bit of compensation for giving up the bishop pair? What is it? Yes, b6 is the move correct. And this is absolutely right that this position, let me see what are the moves that have been said b6 fantastic guys really well done uh rishab ekam aryan piyush vaibhav arnav uh, nikte samarth gagan and vilas bhoyar this is <coughs> the correct move b6 because then you are gaining tempo on the queen also, if we look at this opening on our mega database, you will see that this position itself has been reached uh, 1043 games. B6 has already been reached. Bishop G5 is the main move. And here, by far, the main idea is Bishop A6 in these positions. And it's very theoretical. Like, I know that you have to play like accurately for many, many moves and then it's equal. But with it goes for bishop b7 and I believe that this is fighting move and also with it himself has played it once before if you look here against David Howell at the Mr. Dodgy Invitational. Okay, that was blitz but but he has played it once already before. So bishop b7 and then here he went 95 and it was played just in one game if you see this game this position 99 times rook c1 is one of the moves here then rook d1 is another move e3 is another move but knight e5 was played and this has been played in a game between 1800 and 2000 players so clearly this is preparation by jordan we can also have a look at the time on the clock when Jordan makes this move after bishop g5, bishop b7, he used just 4 minutes of his time. So, it could be his preparation. Now, one of the things that could be an issue here is what happens after knight bd7. You know, this is one of the key things to look at as to why. I mean, I want to play this. Why not play knight bd7? What could be the reason? Yes, easy kitchen. Very good. Mahish SA says knight d7. Mahish, but I think after queen d7, bishop f6, gf6, this structure which is broken is not so bad for black. And I think black will be fine. White does not have too many attacking options here. So, not knight d7, but Harsh, Rajsi, Gohil, Tizia Kumar, Manan Nath. That is right. Knight c6 is the move. And my knight sits here. And if I have to give up my bishop, then I think this is what white wants. Although even this position is playable in general. But with it played queen d6. And what Vidit is doing is that he is preparing knight bd7 here, but not having to worry about knight c6 in this push. So e3 was played and now came the move c5. Once again, if you look at queen d6, Vidit took a massive 23 minutes to play, but it is one of the best moves according to the engine. So really kudos to Vidit once again. He is in really good form in this tournament. He is, you know, if he is putting in time and effort, he is able to find good moves here. So, e3, c5, bishop f4 was played, threatening knight g6. So, for example, if I go knight bd7, then knight g6 is a killer move. I attack your queen and I am attacking your rook. So, bishop f4, queen dropped back, d takes c5 and now... 
there is an important moment because if you take queen c5, queen c5, b c5, then this is a weakness. This is akela. Well, it's it's all alone on c5. It's called an isolated pawn. So the rook will come to c1 and it will attack it. So we don't want that. What is a good move for black here that Vidit played? Black to play. Can you find it? Let's see what all of you have suggested here. Yes, Rook C8 is the correct move, guys. Anu Rupam Kumar, Abhigyan Sinha, Arush Kaushik, Ayush Mishra, Som, Harsha Aditya, Paras Bhoir, Gagan M. Gagan, Shubham Jagtap and Dheeban Kumar. You are absolutely right. The move Rook C8 is perfect because now you can't take, your queen is hanging. Jordan played bishop e2, with it took with the rook, queen to d4, <coughs> and now came knight d5, hitting the bishop. He played bishop g3, f6. Well, this was quite a provocative move because, I mean, you could have also got knight c6 here, attacking the queen and the knight. So you take and take, and I believe that with it should have gone for this. But also somewhere Vidit was feeling that after castles, he might be slightly worse. In the sense that white has completed development. He has the bishop pair against the bishop and knight. So he must do something immediately. And that's why he played f6. But now knight d... Oh, he went knight c4. Actually, I'm very surprised. Why did he not go knight d3? What could be the reason, guys, that Jordan did not like knight d3? Because rook is attacked. Okay, e5, I have queen g4. Sorry, queen g4 here. Uh, rook c2 is possible. But then I can go queen a4 hitting your rook. And this could become a potential weakness here. So, I think knight d3 would have been very good. But he went knight c4. And now with it was back. You know, he ex first played bishop a6 okay one more thing is maybe to knight d3 he could have been afraid of knight c6 but then after queen h4 this rook is kind of misplaced if i go rook c2 then now the queen can switch over to a4 and the rook is trapped so this is this is definitely an issue here okay knight c4 he went bishop a6 b3 knight c6 queen b2 and now it is with its move he's thinking here but i think already black has a pretty decent position here uh, but time wise with it is not doing well yeah he's 27 minutes jordan has one hour uh, and time could play an important factor here Well, what is the move that Vidit should play in this position is the question. Uh, Bishop c4 says Rakshit, Anand Naik also says, yes, you take, but now he can take with the pawn or the bishop. So let's assume that I take with the bishop here. I have to unsettle your formation here. So how do I unsettle this? What move should black play? The moves, number of moves that have been done are 19 only until now. 19 moves. Yes, Knight A5. Priyanshu Sharma, Rakshit Singh, Saksham Kaul. So here, ah, live board is, I have to flip here. Yeah? Okay, sure. Thank you for that suggestion. 
so bishop c4 knight a5 and now after you go bishop e2 i'll play rook c8 now i'm threatening rook c2 so what is happening is that i'm not giving you enough time to castle like i'm just playing moves which are putting pressure on you so if you play b4 here then i have knight d1 rook d1 and then knight c4 so tactically i'm saving myself i guess what could be better then is that after black takes bishop c4 to take with the pawn but once you take with the pawn i think that white is black is doing well here let's say castles now i would love to play e5 to close this bishop but then bishop here and this could come could become problem you know the light squares so this is the position which could be something interesting to talk about uh, if we talk about the imbalances here could could someone tell me what are the imbalances for both sides Sushan says I won't go bishop a2 I will go bishop a6 acha this position you are saying yeah like after take take here you want to go bishop a6 yes but uh, ah you are you are stopping me from coming here good very very interesting plan but then I can go rook c3 and if you play e4 now to attack the knight then rook takes b3 is hanging and if you play b4 here <coughs> then knight c4 and already i have light square control so okay coming back to the question that i had asked was this position the imbalances here are isolated pawn for white correct bishop pair and isolated pawn sisodia dilwar singh well done uh misplaced rook for black says crazy content could be misplaced but also could be well placed though like it's putting pressure on c4 it can swing over to the other side if needed rahul khatwani <coughs> open d file isolated pawn and bishop pair yeah and the main <coughs> imbalances would be white has the bishop pair which gives him a small edge against the two knights but c4 is weak which kind of balances out the stuff and so in this position i would definitely say that white is slightly you know maybe it's around equal but it's an interesting position it's not dull okay so this is how things stand here and by the way um, all those who have come in right now and i uh, have been asking like what has happened in the game of anish giri and daniel dubov uh, so just so that you are aware of it <coughs> tata steel has issued a statement on that front and i can just show it to you one more time uh, that daniel dubov will not be coming to play because he's one of the people in his inner circle has tested positive and uh, they have asked him he's not tested positive they have asked him to they asked him to wear a mask and play but dubov on principle doesn't like to play with a mask so he declined coming to the round so going back and well it's like that this gives anish i think uh, a great boost in the tournament not that he would have liked this point but well what to do when you get it you take it and now he won against karuana yesterday today against dubo so he is one of the leaders right now although mamed yarov kalsen and vidit are still playing so they are all on four by the way shakriar mamed yarov is playing against richard rapport and it's a crazy position as you can imagine white is going this way to checkmate black is coming this way to checkmate him who's going to reach there first is the question so you know like <clears throat> just as an example b4 
एच फाइव ठीक है अभी अगर तुम टाइम वेस्ट करोगे तो एच सिक्स लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू प्ले बी टेक सी थ्री देन व्हाइट हैज अ विनिंग मूव यर विच इज कैन यू फाइंड इट विदित प्लेड द मूव वॉट डिड ही प्ले बिशप टेक सी फोर ओ ही प्लेड ई फाइव That was the other move, other possibility there. He has played e5, but light squares do become slightly weaker. <coughs> yeah, Asta Sharma, Rahul Khatwani, Deepan Kumar, Kushagra Chawla, very good. Here you just play h6, and the key point is that after take here, I can take, and somehow there is no check in the position. everything is controlled and there is a forced mate here so to h5 you might have to play h6 and then when i take here now you take here so that's how crazy position is this one then you take here then i take here then you give a check then i go here then you give a check threatening maybe okay this defended for now i play rook f7 and now this is hanging what's going to happen no one knows crazy position and this is going to be fun to watch so mamed yarov kind of holding his own right now and meanwhile ah look at this after prag had gone a4 magnus carlson did not go b4 it's very surprising magnus carlson said prag i know your idea you want to go like this and this and you are a smart little boy you want to sacrifice the exchange that is the reason why you are forcing me here and uh, prag said yeah well so carlson goes h6 and now prag takes pawn takes and white to play bad boy says mega database can be used forever or annually you can use it forever you get updates for a year after that you don't get updates so every weekly updates you get for a year but you can use it forever yes magnus made kind of a waiting move and also it's a useful move h6 because generally let's say knight g5 could come out of the come come at some point and there could be pressure here and he didn't want it and h6 is useful you know in many lines after take take bishop b7 if we saw rook h5 could threaten a mate here so he just thought that it's useful to make this move and then prag took took here okay so now you know prag has a very very weird possibility here can anyone <laughs> i don't know if anyone can fight this it's a very weird move why to play find the most weird move which is a good move here it can't be a normal move yeah you can't play move like something like e4 that's not weird something weird but a good move Ah yes, Omkar Walude, very good. Yeah, let's check uh, Arjun's game after this. <coughs> Phoenix Asimov, Bishop F seven. I don't think would work, right? Rook F seven, and it doesn't seem enough. So the move here, and let me see if you guys. It's weird. I think you guys are good at finding. Yes. it is on the 8 square although not rook 8 but bishop 8 so well done uh, to all those who have found this move omkar abhiraj manas nisarg mohit shaibi vedant thakkar gagan som <coughs> the move here is bishop a8 and oh he played queen e2 by the way but bishop a8 the point was that i want to use the d5 square for my knight and if he plays like knight b6 there is b5 hanging so you can't do that but in the game queen e2 and prag is actually attacking the b5 pawn how do you defend it 
of course you don't want to play b4 now because so now if you play b4 then knight b5 and you can see that the queen is in some trouble here after say queen b6 i can go bishop c4 and i've just got everything perfectly positioned here so uh, rakshank Sawadati, thank you for becoming booster of Indian chess. We have the first member of today. Thank you. By the way, guys, all those who become members on this channel, all of that amount is used for chess players for their uh, improvement. So thank you for becoming here. B4 is not good. You have to play queen B6 and I think Magnus will play it. And then Prague has to decide how to continue, you know, in this position. Okay. Shall we go to Arjun's game who's leading massively in the tournament? Game plays, tutorials, Minecraft fun. I sent uh, AEDs. AED is very special currency for Amruta and me. Because we were in uh, Dubai recently and we spent so many AEDs there. Love the content, Sagar. This is Arjun. We met at World Championship. Arjun, yeah, I did meet a lot of people. I would definitely recognize you from your face, but uh, thank you for your super chat. Okay, let's go here and let's have a look at this game between Arjun. Uh, Hamza Firoz, thank you for becoming backer of Indian chess, is the second member of today. So now what we are looking at is the game between Arjun and Jumabayev, Rinat. Rinat Jumabayev is the top player from Kazakhstan. And by the way, just so that you know, Arjun, all those who are not following this tournament, which might not be many, but still, Arjun is simply killing it in this event. He's on a lead of one and a half points. He's on five and a half out of six. The next player is on four points. He has a rating performance of two nine four seven, and he already uh, is gaining more than nineteen elo points, which has propelled him past twenty six fifty, and also in the top hundred of the world. He's world number ninety four now. So. Let's go to Arjun's game and Arjun played e4, c5, Sicilian and he went for this very uh, kind of quiet type scavenger structure although a3 is picking up as a move but not very popular. This is known as the scavenger setup. Bishop e3, bishop e7, bishop e2. Castles queen d2 take take e5 okay this is a very uh, different way in which Arjun is playing here I think what would have been preferred is a6 here which is very typical like if you go long castle then I go b5 and then I put my queen here I put my bishop here I put my rook here and this is the normal way to play such positions but What Arjun did here was he played e5 and I don't know if this is his prep still. He had no, he had used 28 minutes already. So it's not his prep. Rakshit says, I play the Taimano a lot and a6 is a common move to stop bishop b4. Yeah, but Rakshit, the thing is, this is not Taimano. Because after take, take. Knight takes, knight c6, knight c3, queen c7, a3 is taimano. But here instead of queen c7, you can imagine that knight f6 is played. So it's, you could say a pseudo taimano. You know, semi taimano or something like that. But take, take e5, bishop e3. Now, what has Arjun's move e5 weakened in black's camp? Can anyone tell me? What has been weakened? Rakshit says, is d5 playable as compared to d6? Let's have a look. Uh, 
यस डी फाइव स्क्वेर डी सिक्स जनक निसर्ग डी सिक्स रक्षित सेस डी फाइव इजी किचन डी फाइव धीबन कुमार डी फाइव यू ऑल आर राइट दैट डी फाइव इज अ वीकनेस एंड सो इज डी सिक्स बोथ द स्क्वेर आर वीक इन द पोजिशन सो ओके कमिंग बैक टू द क्वेश्चन ऑफ रक्षित वेदर हियर डी फाइव इज पॉसिबल इट कुड बी बट मे बी दर समथिंग कॉन्क्रीट या आफ्टर बिशप डी फाइव बिशप डी सेवन ई डी एंड यू हैव टू टेक ई डी एंड दिस कुड बी अ पोजिशन दैट वाइट इज हैप्पी टू प्ले विथ एन आइसोलेटेड पॉन So queen d2, knight d4, bishop d4, e5, bishop e3, and Arjun played bishop e6. Bla White castled. Arjun brought his rook to c8. Maybe at the right moment he can sack on c3 and pick up the e4 pawn. F3. So he was sub he supported it. A6. King b1. Queen to c7. Rook c1, very interesting play by uh, Juma Bayev, and it shows his understanding of this position. Like, if you think like on your own, you would go for an idea like g4, I believe. You know, like you want to go all out. If he's attacking, I will also attack, and both sides will attack each other, and then we will see. But Juma Bayev decided. <laughs> Juma Bai have decided that he wants to play a little safe on the queen side first, save his position here, and then go for an attack because he thinks positionally is better because d5 is weak. You know, when I was young, uh, I used to play this game called Age of Empires. Has anyone played that Age of Empires? It's a it's a very interesting uh, game where you have to build civilization and you have to build a city, and then you have to try and attack the others. Yeah, Age of Empires. Yeah, of course. Yes, I have played, and so many of you have played. and in that you know there was always an option whether you can build a few stuff build a few things and already go out on an attack early on and uh, there was another way where you kind of build that towers and walls and everything around your your city your civilization and only when you have a, like a massive i remember there was this kingdom called persian empire where you could have elephants which would go and attack and but to make an elephant you needed like this many wood this many uh grains or something like that and um, it was not easy to make so first you had to fortify yourself you had to put up towers in different places the wall and everything and then you could have that nicely placed and then you could attack and i think juma bayev is going for that approach he's first saving himself like saving in the sense solidifying his position and then he says maybe later we'll see and also <coughs> therefore arjun now decides to go rook d8 although his rook is well placed here he realizes that next move his opponent may come knight d5 <coughs> so here take take bishop d7 and c4 so you see this idea please keep in mind this very interesting plan that juma bayev has essayed here first move the king away then bring the rook then put the knight here and then get your queen side pawns rolling and on the other hand you also get your king side pawns rolling this is interesting position he is white is playing on both the flanks but arjun has to decide now what to do oh guys look at this look at this idea theek hai interesting i push f4 he goes back bishop f2 now can you come up with something active because if you don't and if black white can play bishop d3 bishop e4 white would be totally better 
so you have to come up with a good idea can you find it here bl black to play very good I think a lot of you have managed to find it. The move I was looking for was e4. The chat chess moves have stopped working, but Abhiraj Ratna, Mahish SA, No Name, Sweta Shashi, Mihir Kuwad, Dharmil Vyas, Mohit Kumar Ja, Tizia Kumar, Arnav Murlidhar. Well done. No, the idea here is the very immediate e4 and if you take here I will now play f3 hitting your bishop bishop d3 I will take on g4 then maybe bishop f6 bishop e5 and black is having decent position so this is something that Arjun can do here and I think this might be the best way for him to play let's see if he does it that way if he is able to play it that way then yeah his position could be nice yeah let's go back to the masters section oh there's also surya's game against murzin that we are looking at and surya has perhaps a slightly inferior position against murzin murzin this young russian talent who's just 15 or 16 years old is playing against surya ganguly and Right now, black's position looks really good because you see the black pieces are well positioned and white's pieces look a little bit, I mean, what do you do? Yeah, maybe f4, f5 is a plan, but before that black is coming in on the queen side. So slightly better position there. Okay, Pragnananda versus Carlson. As we, as we said, after Prag went queen e2. Carlson has played queen b6 defending his pawn on b5. So this has happened and now Prague has to decide what to do next. So this would be, I think, round equal. We'll see what Prague does. Let's go to Vidit's game against Jordan Van Forest. Ooh, we have the third member for today, Saurabh Verma. Thank you for becoming backer of Indian chess, Saurabh. So, we saw till knight c4, bishop a6, b3, knight c6, queen b2. And we were expecting with it to take here on c4. But he played e5 and Jordan has brought his rook to d1. You know what I'm a little bit worried about all, all these light squares are weak. So somehow that does worry me a bit. Can I can I do like rook d8? And then castles. And there is pressure down the d file, you know, here. And the bishops can become very active. So and look at with its time, you no, know, 19 minutes. Jordan has 44 minutes. Actually, Jordan took 16 minutes to play this move, rook d1. Both of them are taking quite some time, but with it now has to speed up. He has to make 20 moves in 18 minutes. Not easy. I'm actually thinking very seriously about what Vidit should do here. Okay, one one plan. Knight a5. If you take here, then I take on e2. Forcing you, if you take with the king, then there is knight c3 check. If you take with the queen, there is still knight c3. I like this move knight a5 actually. Knight a5, what, what is... What is Dubu? Uh, what is he going to do? Maybe he does castles. Now, can we take? What can we take with the bishop? 
then b takes c4 and the knight maybe let's say i go knight c7 i love the fact that this is a weakness on c4 and my rook is well placed because generally the square in front of the isolated pawn is very powerful but the problem is that here the bishop pair could become an important thing and here gen in such positions when you have the bishop pair what should you do and try to find white's move by the way with it did play knight a5 in this position so we will come to that position once again but here white to move can you tell me what do you do here yes chintan shaparia very good chintan the main point is f4 here why i like f4 tushar sanpal mistadam kartikeya sokal kamal vijay ram Go gauran sharma manan nath chin because i have the bishop pair and if you look this bishop can be good you know later it can come from this diagonal but this is very bad and when you have the bishop you have to open up the position and so f4 becomes a very good move and with e4 you are not really keeping the position closed anyway because after bishop e1 i'll put my bishop on b4 with c5 coming up black is doing very well i mean white is doing very well so here with it has gone knight a5 now <clears throat> I'm expecting Jordan to play castles here because knight a5 is a blunder. We'll say knight a5, bishop e2. And as we just saw, if queen e2, we have knight c3 fork. Even if you take king e2, we still have knight c3 fork with a check. So you have to, you have to, you can't take on a5. And uh, Jordan might for Jordan only move is castles let's say for example you castle and now I was thinking like bishop c4 we just saw but what about knight c4 knight c4 b takes c4 knight c7 this could be a playable position now e4 I agree that f4 but let's say I take bishop takes. Well, there is a threat of this is not a threat. This is hanging. So for now, I guess I can play rook d8 or rook e8 and black should be okay. Black should be okay here. Mithilesh Nayak says, what about b4? Well, Mithilesh, but what about knight takes c4 attacking the queen? You don't even get two pieces. You lose a piece fully. Take and... Ah, you want to take then. Because I take with the rook then. Interesting. So you want to do b4. Knight c4. Bishop c4. Rook c4. Rook d5. This is what you wanted to do, right? Well, maybe the problem here is that I go, let's say, bishop b7, attacking your rook. And let's say your rook goes back. Then I take on g2. And when you come here, I can just come on f3. And I'll bring my rook to c8. And this is a big problem here for you. Also, look at this bishop. is completely passive. So this is not working. B4 is not B4 is not working there. Will VD, VD's time affect his game? Well, I think <coughs> with knight a5, the position has clarified a bit. So when you exchange a few pieces, then the time disadvantage becomes a little lesser because it's easier to play with less pieces on the board. Yeah, Divyanshu Mishra, it's also possible. Instead of bishop b7 in that line and taking on g2, you could have gone queen b7 and then taken here. I'm just a little bit worried that queen b7, there would be e4 holding the rook there.
right now we are on move number 21 and Jordan has castled. He has castled and he has thrown the ball again in Vidit's court. This was expected. Castle is the best move here. I'm actually expecting Vidit to take on C4 with the knight. Yes, he has done it. He's played it. He's taken. Now again, bishop takes c4 is out of question because if you take on bishop, then bishop takes, pawn takes. Just a very bad position if you are going to give up your bishop pair. Remember guys, when you have the bishop pair, you do not get exchange them. You keep the bishop pair and that's why pawn takes c4 is correct and with it plays knight c7. You can see once more, when with it feels he's low on time, he makes a lot of moves quickly and now he is on move 22 and he played some three moves quickly. So the position has become manageable. We discussed a very similar position and I feel that here we have this massive imbalance, c4 weakness, c5 outpost, white has bishop pair, black has a knight and bishop. I like black's position. But I think for Jordan, it's also a nice position, f4. I think those who are more positional in nature will like black's position because there is a permanent weakness here on c4. Those who are more aggressive, prefer more activity oriented will like white's position because there is bishop pair and an ability to open up the position with f4. Saurav Mishra says, Hello Sagar, I got my first chessboard today. Which opening position do you feel is most promising to study for OTB for beginners? Okay, very interesting. I would suggest that you can study these uh, E4, E5 opening traps, you know, uh, maybe from, from the opening trap series on Chessbase India, or you can just search Italian opening or fried liver attack. You can check these interesting aggressive lines, Ivan's Gambit. Maybe you can learn those. Let's go to Maprak game. Yeah. Okay. So in Pragnananda's game after Queen E2, Queen B6, he played the move E4. So he's put like very nicely his bishop in the center. And now black plays a move which is very typical of strong players. Can you try to think what should black play here? Black to move. Yes, rook e8, fantastic. It's a very little move and has been mentioned by Mukul Mag Manghani, Mukund Thak Thakur, Priyansh Pahuja, Himanshu Sethi, Joy Datta, Ayush Ganguly, Chess is Love, very good. So rook e8 and this is a very little move here. But... Remember, if you can put your rook opposite opponent's queen, it's a very good idea. And these are the little moves that the world champion is really good at. And he forced Prague to play queen d2. So I, get a, I get a feeling that here, Magnus is slowly starting to take over here. Again, can you play a little move here as black? Black to play. Ro Raghav Garg, yes. Very good. I like this move. Just put Bishop F8. So this little idea here, whereby you bring your Rook here and Bishop here is a very common piece arrangement or you can say rearrangement here now the e4 and d5 is under pressure i can push you with b4 at the right moment and uh, 
yeah this this could become a weakness i like i like white's position here sorry i like black's position here Priyank Siddhi says, why is it that sometimes engine shows no advantage and then when the player whose chance it is plays, he gains an advantage? Is it because engine cannot calculate these moves? Well, sometimes it is like, you know, the engine, these are sometimes the browser based engines are not very strong. When you make the move, it already goes one move deeper into the position because one move has been made and sometimes that helps. But I wouldn't trust entirely on the browser based engines they are not as strong as your local engines which you use on chess base or any other software okay let's also go to with its game and see what is up there <coughs> after he played his knight to c7 now jordan is thinking he has 35 minutes with it has 18 minutes on the clock we also check. Uh, we were also looking at Rapport versus Mamedyarov game, and it has kind of equalized. V B four, H five, H six. Oh, it happened. A B A B, C four. Acha. He played a little bit calmly there. Queen G five, and then they. Okay, this will end in a draw now. So Shakriyar had managed to hold here. By the way, Shakriyar has played it, played this opening, uh, the same that Arjun was playing, no, A3. Arjun played D6 here. He played D5. This was your question, right? Uh, Rakshit. And this is exactly what happened. Interesting. Esipenko versus Sh Sam Shankland. Esipenko looks slightly better here. Uh, Sam has just... He just played king f7. So why not take here? Guys, can you calculate a mate in four? Wow. It's a nice mate. Oh, Jordan has played his move. Let's just look. Yeah, okay. Let's have a look at the chat chess moves. Keith has fixed it. So thank you so much, Keith. Yes, Queen C8. Brilliant job, guys. Queen C8 is the move I was looking for. Samir Salastekar, Agniwo, Roshana, Rahul, Vithal, Mamba, Raghav, Saksham, Tizia, Karan, Yogi. Well done. So queen c8 check is the correct move and I give you a check and then it's important to see rook takes f4 followed by queen takes f8. So you can't take here and it seems he's better here. Esipenko. Okay, let's go to the game of Vidit because we had a move there and Vidit game after knight c7, Jordan had to play f4 as we discussed. But he went queen b3, which is perhaps not the best <coughs> idea. And with it goes queen e6. Well, maybe queen e6. Hmm. I'm a bit surprised because knight e6 is very natural. I don't know why with it did not do this. And also what is his plan with queen e6? Maybe he wants to play b5 here. Queen e6. But f4 is now very interesting, but c4 also, he's putting pressure on the c4 pawn three times. Whoa, and Jordan pushes f4. You know, this is something which you guys have to learn. Uh, I don't know. So, generally, it's you can take care of your weaknesses here, like c4. Or you can play on your strengths. And here, Jordan said to himself, Ki dekho bhai, Maths me to apne ko kuch aata nahi hai. Thik hai? Toh pura time maths ka padai karne se achcha hai, Ki apna jo achcha cheez hai, History me knowledge hai, Usko use karte hai. Let's play to our strengths. 
let's play f4 in the position i mean, just randomly i chose the subjects but now if with it were to take bishop takes c4 bishop takes c4 queen takes c4 queen takes c4 rook takes c4 f takes e5 f takes e5 bishop e5 suppose this position then what has happened is that position has equalized now right so you you cannot what with it thought is that jordan will keep studying maths he will go and defend this then he will get his rook here then he will play his knight e8 to d6 and then there will be so much pressure here that he will collapse but jordan instantly played f4 this counter attack i really want you guys to sometimes really pay attention to that and now if suppose with it takes here then what does white do with which piece does he take with the bishop or rook can you tell me white takes with the rook yes rook is the correct pratik bhat hitesh rajput kartik tiwari viraj patel you take with the rook the reason is that now the rook defends the c4 pawn and this really now starts to give white a lot of activity because the rook can go to g4 the bishop can join in there's a lot of action that is happening here so f4 good move by jordan and i think with it can be now in two mindsets here he can be like okay let's draw the game let's take on c4 and mm, it's okay exchange 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 shake hands let's end it but he has decided to take on f4 very surprised rook f4 fighting chess incoming guys fighting chess abhi black has left white has left everything related to positional chess well a positional chess if suppose this was positional chess yeah book then he took this book and threw it in the dustbin because <laughs> not in that terms in the fact that look at weakness 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 right e3 is weak c4 is weak a3 is weak but what he's got in return is activity 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 look at this the bishop is open this bishop is ready to come here the rook is ready to swing here these rooks can enter so with it now instantly goes rook e8 and now this is getting really nasty for with it because he is thinking that his opponent is going to react to his threats but actually not actually not in this position jordan now has a decisive advantage wow but it's not so simple to understand how but it's a beautiful line there look at this can you tell me what is a good move here for white try to think try to think and figure out what is the good move for white here it's not easy try to think for yourself so this is hanging here three is hanging yeah with it today i might be in trouble with it might be in trouble but you know the position is not so simple for white to win yet he has to find a yes rook f d4 what a move yeah here if you play this move it's a crazy move now why is it a crazy move and who has given the right answers let me see here the right move has been given by rook f d4 i will take not rook d4 because both rooks can go to d4 dharmil vyas chess masters chess master kartik sayed abid udit meer kushagra bhavik tizia kumar and rich yeah guys i was speaking for like what 10 15 minutes it's 
I was telling you everything and then I saw what it is just gone off. So very sorry for that. Uh, it completely went off. And I don't know what was the reason, but very sorry for that. Thank you uh, for staying back all those who have. But what I was trying to explain and I don't know what was the last moment which I left at. Yeah, I think I explained so much. Sorry. So, by the way, one second, someone have to do. So what I was telling is that after rook f d4, it was more like ki ye pawn as a weak pawn. Hai, so you give it up. You just give up that pawn and you play for activity after bishop f1, threatening bishop f2, c7, hanging, all that stuff. But it is very difficult for human beings to play because human beings are like this. See, I'll tell you this very interesting uh, thing. Suppose you earn... 1 lakh rupees a month okay suppose you earn 1 lakh rupees a month and suppose you work 25 days a 25 days in a month that comes to 4000 rupees a day 4000 rupees a day ko agar apun 8 ghanta kaam kiya theek hai 8 hours I'm just trying to make something out of this so that means you are earning 500 rupees per hour okay 500 rupees per hour ko agar apun 60 minutes se karte hai to roughly 10 rupees per minute happens okay now imagine that you are going in an auto rickshaw okay and you get down and you it has cost you say 95 rupees now you give him 100 rupees now the auto rickshaw guy says i don't have 5 rupees you're like i need 5 rupees so the rickshaw guy says okay fine i will go and i will try to find 5 rupees change somewhere and he goes and he goes for 10 minutes okay somewhere but then he comes back and gives you 5 rupees so what happened here is that you actually that 5 rupees which you got the value was not good was not enough in fact if you would have left it if you would have left that 5 rupees and gone for your work it could have been better now if, if it's your salary you are anyway going to get but suppose it was dependent upon you spending that time of work but there is this inherent feeling in our mind that what we are anyway going to get we should get it that way and how that relates to this position is that this e3 pawn when you attack it our mind as a chess player is always like what is attack let's defend it but the engines are not so fixated like us yeah and it goes rook fd4 and it gives up this pawn it gives up that five rupees it's like time is more important here activity is more important and that is the reason why this was a better move but once you play bishop f2 all of a sudden with its position becomes much much better i mean in the sense that now it's become more stable that one bishop has now become passive and so with it goes queen f7 good move preparing knight e6 to knight g5 to knight e4 rook f d4 and now he brings his bishop to c8 he brings his bishop to c8 and now he takes control of the d7 square. And now knight e6, knight g5, knight e4 is coming. So this looks like a great, great position right now. Very exciting one. Maybe white still has a small edge. Perhaps with it should have started off with knight e6 instead of bishop c8. 
but then you are afraid of rook d7 here but you have rook e7 and d8 is controlled by your knight so here maybe Vidit could have had a small edge in this position and and I mean this would have been much better than what he did with bishop c8 but still the position is quite quite exciting and we are on move 27 Vidit has 12 minutes Jordan has 30 minutes 13 more moves to make so now let's have a look at Pragnananda versus Carlson while Jordan is thinking for his move uh, Bishop f8 as we said Carlson drops back his bishop he plays rook e8 bishop f8 then queen comes to f4 nice move b4 knight to a4 attacking the queen and here Carlson plays a very nice move can you find the move where did he move his queen black to play his queen is attacked but a very nice move Yeah, here the main move and let me see if, sorry, we are back, we are back, everything is good, uh, sorry for that small lag, won't happen again. Uh, so knight a4 and now the main move is knight takes d5 and this has been said by Anurag Mishra, Mista Dam, Umesh Pratap Singh, Aman Khinvasara. Chess is more than fun. Snehashis, Ajinkya, Tushar, Aryan Philip, and Rajam Shankar. Well done. Uh, so knight d5, knight b6. Because if you now play e takes d5 in this position, then after queen d6, black's position is much more cohesive. You know, you take, take. And bishop pair, this pawn is slightly weak. Knight can come to b6, bishop b7, this is weak. So, <clears throat> I like I like black's position here. Um, also, rook e2 could be an idea. So, here, Prague took rook takes d5. And it was a trick question from my end where to move the queen. Because wherever you move the queen, white gets an advantage. Because he moves his bishop away. But taking on d5 is important. And now, rook takes. And now after rook d5, where will the queen go? Queen c6, queen b7, these are the two moves which could be played. And I think black is better. If we just look at the position and try to analyze why black is better, one of the main reasons is the bishop pair. And also the bishop could later come here. <coughs> And secondly, I mean, white's position looks like it has potential with the bishop looking here, the queen here, the rook can come into the game. But somehow, it's not so simple. And let's say if I go queen c6, how do you create the play in the position with white? It's not so simple, not so simple. And that's why Magnus is better right now. But Prague is fighting. And meanwhile, Richard Rapport and Mamed Yarov have drawn which means Mamed Yarov is now on four and a half points. Let's see if Carlsen beats Prague and becomes the leader or what happens in Vidit's game because Vidit versus Jordan is also, Vidit is also one of the leaders. Bishop c8 has been played here controlling this. Let's quickly move to Arjun's game. Uh, Arjun versus and we we were discussing the the idea with f4. If you remember after uh, h4 here we were looking at f4 followed by e4 but that did not happen arjun went rook de8 g5 f4 
bishop f2 and now there is no e4 because then later on g4 pe koi pawn hanging nahi hai so bishop f5 check bishop d3 takes takes <coughs> a4 a5 b3 bishop d8 and if you just look at the basic imbalance here what is the most basic imbalance which gives white an advantage here can you tell me what is that move what is that reason better minor piece harsh thakur very good space could also be but bad bishop for black pratik bhat very good chess king bad bishop <coughs> so this bishop is a bad bishop because all the black pawns are on the same color as this bishop this bishop is a good bishop because all the white pawns are on the opposite color of it so that is the major imbalance which gives black the which gives white the advantage king d3 look at how rinath is getting his king to the other side nice king walk brought his king to safety and now his plan is to play b4 and c5 break at the right time so very very imaginative and how can you say uh, move with foresight he meko yahan se i want to open up the position my king will become weak so why don't i just put my king safely here yes there also it's not like 100% safe but it's way safer than on the queen side so a nice king walk and this is the position right now i would say arjun is under pressure but there are good chances that he can hold this also this time pressure phase could be important but rinath has 20 minutes and arjun also has 20 minutes and they have only nine moves to make so i don't think time pressure is going to get to them in in any way <coughs> going back to the game of vidit here after bishop c8 we saw the move bishop g3 was played knight e6 attacking the rook on d4 rook d5 was played and now vidit has to decide on what is the further course of action here one idea could be to drop the rook back to get the c5 square for the knight but if you drop the rook back then maybe it results in you know too many pieces which are loose so better could be to give up this to exchange this rook even at the cost of giving white a passer but plonking your knight on c5 let's say you go queen uh, c3 here oh by the way vidit has taken vidit has taken which is the best move and now not rook takes rook takes would be utterly wrong in this position because this would mean that this pawn is still weak and i can just put my knight here black is better i'll then play bishop b7 and you know if black's bishop becomes active and if white at some point has to exchange it with his bishop then this knight is very powerful on c5 so i i don't think that this is a, a good idea here so he he took with the pawn which is correct and he's put his knight on c5 now where do you move your queen is the question i will i don't think you can play queen c4 because of bishop a6 trouble trouble there queen c3 94 looks scary you know like if you go here i go 94 it's not something that human beings would want to play although queen c3 is the best move by the engine i don't think that jordan will opt for that but also you don't want to play a move like queen a2 because then rook e3 is hanging and although here also so actually what would what would jordan play here is the question it's not so simple i think he might do queen c3 anyway 90 because other moves lose the e3 pawn let's go to pragnananda versus magnus carlsen game here and oof 
Oof, man, that is huge. I think Prague has just blundered Queen E6. Oh, and Prague had a chance here. He missed it. Guys, Prague had a very important chance in this position. White to play. Can you find it? Yes, knight takes c5. Mudit, chess is more than fun. Rakshank, Vivek, Amrita, Aman, Siddhant, Ab Dishant, Chintan. Very good. The, the thing is that after knight takes c5, what is happening is that this rook remains undefended. So if you take with the bishop, I take with the rook. And if you take with the knight, my queen chops off this rook. And that is where Prag could have fought back in this game completely. Like takes here, takes here. And I guess this is this is good for good drawing chances here. Bishop d4. If you take knight e4, I can play like h3. Yes, you have an extra pawn, but opposite colored bishops, it should be drawn. But Prague went rook a d1, and this is such a bad move now. Because there are many, many ways in which black can take an advantage and the biggest way is c4 in c4 if you take now this is the move which is so difficult to find rook e8 and i am not sure if magnus can find this c4 and rook e8 because this knight is trapped unbelievable it is trapped you can't do anything so you have to play like rook a1 and once you put your rook there i'll play bishop b7 attacking your rook here let's say and the knight is out of the game. This is better position for, for Carlson. But yeah, I agree with you that c4 and rook 8 is not an easy idea to spot at all. And therefore, Prague has good chances. What are the other options that Carlson can do? Maybe bishop b7, but then he just loses d7. So that is not possible. Knight f6 hit is hit by bishop takes. So actually speaking, Prague was like... Rook d1 looks totally natural. You know, I'll play my rook here and I'm attacking here. It looks great for me. But I think this idea of c4, b c4, rook a8 or rook a8 with the idea of c4, these both are very powerful moves here. And let's see if Carlsen is able to find this. Otherwise, Prag is doing okay. So going back to with its game, Jordan has played queen c3, which is the most natural move here. Queen to c3. I want to play knight e4 here as black. But, you know, again, as we say, it's not about what goes outside the board. What remains on the board is important. And here, yes, there are weaknesses for white. But this passer is too strong. And I think with it could go here into such a position. And it is not like completely losing or something. But he would... Oh, he's played knight e4. He's played it. I was thinking he could also wait and play bishop d7. Just improve his position. But knight e4 has been played and I think Jordan will play queen d4. He has also played it. 32 moves have been completed. 8 more moves to make. 10 minutes for Vidit. And now I guess taking on g3 is the most natural human move to play. Because if you play like let's say bishop d7 then you could be afraid that he will just move his bishop away. And you don't want that to happen. So I think Vidit will take on g3. Pawn takes g3 and play this position. <laughs> but I feel that this is then playing for two results here. I don't see black being better here, especially with this passer. And white is the one who will, <coughs> who will push. Mm -hmm. Did Magnus make his move? Not yet. Yeah, Magnus still thinking. Meanwhile, with its game also still Jordan thinking for his move. Ah, sorry, with it thinking for his move here. And Arjun 
ओके अर्जुन इज जस्ट वेटिंग है अर्जुन इज प्लेइंग द वेटिंग गेम ही इज लाइक तुम करो आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू वेट विथ माई पीसेस यू ट्राई टू फिगर आउट हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू ब्रेक थ्रू एंड इफ यू गिव मी अ चांस आई एम लुकिंग फॉर बी फाइव और ए फोर ब्रेक समवेयर इट्स नॉट अ वेरी प्लेजेंट पोजिशन टू बी इन Bishop f5 is being mentioned by a few few people in the chat, but I'm a bit worried about d6. Then Bishop f5, d6. The idea of later d7. Okay, so we will come back as Vidit makes his move here. Uh, let's uh, also look at pragnananda carlson and carlson has 12 minutes 55 seconds pragnananda has 11 minutes they have 17 moves to make so the time pressure in this game is much much more and you know guys if you see the engine here it says a advantage of plus 3.7 for black that is even a bigger advantage than a piece it's like black is a piece up close to a rook up but No, it's it doesn't feel so. It doesn't feel so, yeah. I would be very surprised if Magnus plays c4 and rook 8. I mean, if he manages to find this, it would be amazing. But on the other hand, that doesn't look like a better option. Like rook 8 seems very very by the by elimination. he might find rook 8 because also yes see he's found it rook 8 because the, there was no other move knight if you move then this was hanging and bishop was not being able to move because knight was hanging so by the elimination he has found rook 8 here and uh, yeah the question is what does prag do now pragnananda has all his pieces beautifully positioned but there is no way to break through you know it's like you've done everything that is in your control yet you're not able to find a way to break through so then whatever you do is going to spoil your <coughs> spoil your coordination H3 could be an idea to take away back rank threats, but then C4, as we just saw, and you can't take because of Rook A4. Otherwise, C3 is coming in. <laughs> okay, one more idea here could be Knight E5, and then if you take, I take with the Rook, but then you have Queen B3. Rook takes E8 is met with Queen takes D1, so you can't take there. it's not working out magnus has magnus is going to beat prag here vidit versus ooh vidit going down on time yeah he's down to 6 minutes but it's an important moment in the game whether you want to take on g3 or you want to keep your knight it's a very important game it is a very important move here Mohit Chess says Bishop F5. If D6 take on G3, take here and Rook E5. But Mohit, what about just here G D7? Is that not working? Or what about just Bishop C4, winning the Queen? Like you play here, and now I can go D7 with the idea of D8 Queen. So this it's not going to work. Oh, with it decides not to take on G3. and plays his bishop to d7 and he's kept his knight on e4 for some time he is looking at taking this bishop but i think for jordan the next move is simple just put the bishop on f4 keep his bishop pair intact in the position but then <clears throat> he does have to contend with vidit starting to play aggressively like in his game with anish with the move g5 
bishop c7 and i don't know like who is better it's a crazy crazy position here So, Bishop d7 and Jordan is thinking about what his move is going to be. Uh, let's quickly check what is up with Prague. Not much here after rook 8, Prague is still thinking. I mean, if you were in Prague's position, what move would you play with white? What is the move that comes to your mind? Ah, yes, that, but that doesn't work. I mean, I want to play knight d2, knight c4. Yeah, he's played bishop f4 in the other game. Queen c7, you are saying, yeah? Possible. Queen c7 trying to enter the position. But maybe this e4 pawn falls. And back rank is always an issue, so you can't really, for now, Take on d7. Take, take, then here. And then this is a problem. Back rank is an issue. So queen c7 doesn't work. Knight d2, I want to play with the idea of knight c4. But then this battery is broken to the d7 knight. And then bishop b7 attacks the rook. So even there it doesn't work. So Pragnananda in big difficulty. Magnus, even on a board with so many pieces, you can sometimes feel so helpless. Magnus has this idea of c4 and Prag has just no way of dealing with it. Somehow. But Prag really should have found knight takes c5 here. It would have given him... A great position and I think Magnus would have been really upset here because he could have instead of going queen e6 played queen c6 keeping an eye on c5 pawn but he went here and this was the moment to chop this off and get some equalish chances and look at this with its game after Jordan played bishop f4 with it did go g5 with it is not really been afraid of pushing his kingside pawns in this tournament now bishop c7 has been played but black has what does black do now do you play f5 and like let's go all in do you play h5 and try to gain more space there are many possibilities for now the position is balancing quite evenly but i do feel that with its position is becoming tougher and tougher to play uh i'm not sure how to continue uh, because he is threatening d6 now with the idea of bishop c4. Six more moves to be played by Vidit. It is on 34th move and he has only four minutes left. Clearly Vidit under big big pressure here. He plays king g7. You know, <clears throat> it could have been a more practical decision time-wise to take, take and play bd7. But with it said, I'll keep my knight on e4. It looks very good. And now he's played king g7. The question is, what do you do for bishop d3? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm attacking here. There is a nice move here for black black to play can you find it i don't think with it i mean if with it makes a draw today that should be a good result for him ooh bishop d3 there is a there is a very nice move here for black Yes, Anirudh V, very good. Anirudh, Saranj, Chauhan, Divyansh, Gaurav, Khadse, very good. The move is Bishop G4, attacking the Rook and also the Bishop. 
and if you play rook here then i go knight c5 once again attacking the bishop and if you play d6 then now i can take take at least i've gotten rid of one important bishop and i come back and your bishop is somehow out of play and this should be good so king g7 bd3 bg4 is very good so you let's say you play bishop f3 you hit the bishop from the other side so now i play bishop f5 defending this and you play d6 so now your threat could be to take on e4 and then later play d7 d8 so let's say for 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 example uh, if you were to play something like h5 just for the sake of argument then i have d7 <laughs> and wherever you go d8 is coming in also e4 would hang so bishop f3 i think is an important move here for white and then with it has to maybe after bishop f5 d6 play knight c5 controlling d7 bishop c6 trying to get there then bishop d7 will somehow you are able to hold on here as uh, as white as black black is holding on somehow because this bishop is kind of out of play also rook f1 is possible here i mean it could go either way guys this game and also we are on move number 34 six more moves need to be played with it has four minutes jordan has a very solid 19 minutes so he's not under time pressure at all While, meanwhile pragnananda is now down to six minutes he has played his queen to c1 and prag says to magnus that look now you can't play c4 because i'll take it with my queen however black can chop off the pawn on e4 and once he does that black is pawn up here the main problem here is that after take take and take i go rook a d8 you take and you take here what happens is that this knight because it is out of the game and because the back rank is weak this position is lost threat is queen e2 and rook d1 stop it if you can i don't see a way to stop this threat of queen e2 and here if you play like here then i give a check and anyway i come here threatening rook d1 so after queen c1 i'm sure magnus is going to pick up this e4 pawn and claim that he's better going back to vidit gujarati's game he has played rook f1 rook to f1 putting pressure on the f6 point he didn't move his bishop to f3 or d3 he's played rook f1 and now with it has to decide how to continue uh, you know let's say if i play like b5 in this position just as an improving move that may not work out because bishop can come out from this side and we don't want that we want this bishop in but also the question is how does with it i mean somewhere he would love to play f5 but the pawn is pinned two minutes for five moves is not easy 35 36 37 38 39 40 it's actually six moves guys 35th move karna hai abhi bhi. so six moves in just two minutes the best move here is at six but <laughs> that's not an easy move again it's a it's a move you have to find based on el elimination because if you play h6 and he plays bishop d3 then here there is knight d2 or knight c5 and if you play bishop f3 here then there is bishop b5 attacking this and this <sighs> one minute 37 seconds left no i i, I doubt whether with it can play a move like h6 here it's not easy to play that move not at all 
and you can't move the rook because because of the e4 knight i guess knight c5 is a very natural way to continue here knight c5 and uh, but here is a very big problem that this is a blunder knight c5 is a blunder why why to play and win aditya kumar after five moves both players get 40 uh, 50 minutes each not yes mr dam you are right anirudh v paramdas gupta kunal gupta bishop h5 deflecting the queen and then queen takes f6 is over king g8 and i play bishop e5 with a mate coming in here or here so that's the reason why it's not simple with it goes queen e7 which is the second best move in the position after h6 he has improved his position of the queen also he is defended e4 and he can now move his rook but this allows bishop h5 also he's played it and you can see jordan is making his moves quickly he's putting with it under pressure he knows that with it has only 1 minute on the clock let me make my moves as quickly as possible so with it has to decide where to move his now rook here uh <clears throat> rook c8 looks like a natural move but then comes d6 and after queen e6 there is bishop f3 hitting this knight all of a sudden you have to move your knight then bishop comes to d5 f6 is weak it's over so vidit has to very carefully go rook f8 here defending his f6 pawn that is a weakness in the position because black is white, white is threatening d6 followed by bishop f3 evicting the knight getting his bishop to d5 and rook c8 oh he's blundered he's blundered here rook c8 as we thought is a very very natural move but now d6 is a killer move and i i think this time jordan is not going to leave it he will play d6 with it should have found rook f8 here defending the f6 pawn but i guess it's not simple to realize that after d6 queen e6 bishop f3 is such a killer move because you're blocking the f6 pawn for a minute and for that one minute you feel like how does that work but it's only for one move the main point is that next move i'm anyway going bishop d5 and unleashing an attack here and here so rook c8 if jordan can find this couple of moves d6 bishop f3 and bishop d5 he should be winning this and they are not difficult with 18 minutes on the clock in fact they are the most natural moves here in this position uh yes he has played d6 with it instantly goes queen e6 and now once again bishop f3 yes he's found it you see that jordan is finding has found those couple of key moves and the rest is simple now guys this is the main problem is not only is this passed pawn very strong because you can't move the bishop also the f6 pawn is very weak and both these combined somehow give white an advantage and with it you know he he played really well the game jordan had his chances but now this time i don't see with it making being able to make a comeback here because you know you move the knight anywhere bishop d5 is very strong if you try to protect the knight then i will take on e4 let's say queen e4 i take take and then i play here and i queen so that doesn't work yeah with it goes knight c5 but after bishop d5 it is resign time to resign because <laughs> how else do you defend f6 you have to go queen e5 and then he'll take take rook f7 check king g6 and rook takes d7 knight takes d7 bishop e6 this is this is easy for players of jordan's caliber you are losing the knight you can't move it because you'll lose the rook once you lose the knight then the d pawn queens so well played by jordan really uh putting lot of pressure on the clock as well as on the board 
and forcing with it to blunder but uh, in the other game he's just taken on e4 magnus and h3 has been played by pragnananda taking away his back rank weaknesses it's still not a trivial position by any means can i now play c4 aha there is rook 5 d4 and then i win this correct yeah vidit has played king g6 and now rook d7 yeah no it's i mean for for sure that uh, this this defeat comes at not a great time for vidit because he was playing really well in this tournament yeah takes on d7 as you know like you know you you understand that there are certain series of moves which are easy for top players to find there are certain moves which are not easy to find and somehow this entire sequence starting from uh bishop h5 when he went rook c8 d6 bishop f3 bishop d5 and rook f7 and taking on d7 followed by bishop e6 was not very tough for jordan to find and he's now winning this um yeah as as i was mentioning that this is not at all uh like the ideal time for with it to lose but i mean it's still 4 out of 7 in the tournament and he has good chances of making a comeback if he can i think tomorrow is the rest day if i'm not mistaken or is it day after tomorrow just to be sure he can uh, just calm himself down and make a comeback that would be very good yeah now now i think vidit would resign uh actually earlier they had said tomorrow like at the start of the event but then they changed it to day after tomorrow i think if i'm not mistaken no i think sachin uh, jordan did would have calculated after uh, vidit go went rook c8 i think it's natural to calculate d6 because e5 is hanging uh, sorry f6 is hanging so you have to go queen e6 then you play bishop f3 knight has to move away then bishop d5 then takes here then check i mean it's it may look like 6 7 moves but it's very natural to play that way so i i think he could have calculated that magnus goes rook a7 def keeping uh, an eye on the d7 rook the thing is that both sides do not have too many moves to make it's very funny position yeah like knight cannot move anywhere it's controlled by this knight and also it's controlled by this bishop so rook a7 and now queen d2 has been played yeah with it resigned so let's have a look quick look at arjun's game because arjun is also uh, one of the leaders and 40 moves have been played meanwhile uh, moving here and there has not changed the position in any way but is the last move before time control arjun has 11 minutes it is possible that arjun could hold this but it is also true that the position is highly uncomfortable okay going back now magnus plays his queen back to g6 ln br says true heroes dubo and djokovic okay interesting uh, queen g6 Yeah, I'll put the live board of Arjun's game. Yeah. 
we went to g6 okay um well in a way magnus has managed to keep you know his pieces active c5 is controlled but Prague somewhere do you know the thing that both are down to two minutes and you still have 14 moves to make makes me believe that Prague has some chances to swindle Magnus here. It's not easy, you know, to swindle the world champion because but if there was a time, you know, the thing is there are some positions where you see the plans come naturally to you. Like, ha, yaha pe ye piece yaha aega, then he will take here and then this and this. But here it's not so simple to get all the plans in the position because white is also very active and controlling some key squares in the position. So, my thinking here is that with two minutes on the clock, anything can happen. Knight h4 has been played by Prague attacking the queen of Magnus Carlsen. Let's see, Magnus has to make like 12, 13 accurate moves yeah, before time control. Will he be able to do that? Or will Prague, who is actually a very good blitz player and all these youngsters are lovely, lovely players at swindling their opponents, will he be able to stun Carlsen? What do you think, guys? It's, it's like a uh, blitz, but with not 2 second increment, but 30 second increment. <laughs> Maybe queen e4 attacking the knight could be an idea. Then he has to come back. Darin is saying, Sagar, you are saying it like Magnus is not a good blitz player. No, no, I am just saying that for Magnus, this is like totally winning. And if there's any hope. Like if this was like both players had 10 minutes left, I would have said Prague is gone. But the only reason why Prague can have some chances here is because of lack, lack of time. Not that Magnus is bad blitz, but he's the best in the world. But that is the nature of having less time. You can blunder at any point. Maybe knight f5. Uh, knight f5, the problem is bishop b7. Rook d7, then queen f5. Somehow you don't want to play moves that give your opponent the chance to unravel. How about queen f4? That looks good. It's an active move. You put your queen here. You're still stopping c4 because there's queen c4. Yeah, he's played knight f5. Two moves come to mind here for black. One is c4. The other is bishop b7. I think bishop b7 is a very nice move because rook d7, queen f5. And if you, if you just look at this position, black has unraveled now in a way because his pieces, whatever are left, are all active. So I guess if Magnus plays bishop b7, Prague position is bad oh he didn't play it he played c4 that gives Prague some chances guys see I told you can be tricky can be tricky here they go here they go bishop g7 let's sack something yes a brook thoda side pair it is possible bishop g7 Bishop g7, correct? Now take on g7. King g7 and now rook d6. Or fear queen pe attack and then this is also hanging queen at 6. Will Prague find this? Yes, 32 seconds.
yeah eight seven six prague has to believe in himself oof he plays queen d4 ah it was not easy well he attacks the rook but here is another classy move that magnus has knight f6 if you take here then he'll take on d5 but you know it's not simple magnus also has 40 seconds what is magnus going to do there is c3 but then you lose the rook what about a move like rook c7 oof knight g7 is like killer okay let's see what what magnus does oh he finds knight f6 amazing great move Nice. This is over now. Somehow I do feel that if this, 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 this and this would have happened, then game could have gone really in a dangerous way like rook d4 with the idea of rook g4. Knight f8, check or rook h4, queen. I mean, black has to make many accurate moves. It's not an easy position. Yeah. But anyway. After knight f6, prug goes knight b6. Oof. And now c3. Fine move by Magnus, and the game seems to be over. Uh, he played c3, Prague takes on c8, and now you can take on d5, you can take on b2. Yeah, he takes queen d5. What a game, yeah, but. Magnus played really well. Pixel Yogi says, Thank you for your super chat, Pixel Yogi. Hi Sagar, I have a four year old daughter. I want to get her involved in chess. Does Chess with India offer remote coaching? What do you suggest is the best age to start and get, kid, get kids interested? Thanks. Pixel Yogi, uh, four is a very good age to, to begin. I would suggest that it's the right time to teach her, uh, and I'm sure she will learn it. Maybe one of the best ways for you now. By the way, take on b2 and then knight c3 and then b1 queen. Uh, one of the best ways to learn is for you also to, I think, kind of get into the sport and learn it because then you would be able to teach well. I think Chess Course by Praful Zaveri is a very good book for you to learn. In fact, at Chess Base India, we are trying to make a kid's book on chess, like with all the cartoons and stuff. So maybe that will be available soon, but it'll take some time. But for now, I think Praful Zaveri's chess course is a good good book to begin with. It has from absolutely zero till a lot of till a you can learn till a lot of um, till you become quite strong. And in case if you if you were looking for some training or something, you can write to chessbase in at gmail.com and we will respond back to you. But rook e2 has been played and now knight c3 is coming up with the rook having to come out. Pragnananda resigns the game. Magnus Carlsen is the sole leader of Tata Steel Chess. The man is really unstoppable. Yeah, he played very well. Um this game in fact he managed to i think somewhere prague went wrong with this queen d2 queen f4 like many of these ideas and here he had to take on c5 but when he played this prague uh, rook a8 was such a cool move with the idea of c4 c1 takes Yeah, knight f6. Well played, actually. Well played by Prague. Well played by Magnus. Of course, Magnus played much better than Pragnananda, but 
a good fighting game for the youngster Pragnananda, who's 16 years old, got his first chance to play with the world champion. And it'll go down for him as a great learning experience. Uh, meanwhile, I guess today for India has been a tough day. Vidit lost, Pragnananda lost. What about uh, Arjun? Uh, in, a, in a defensive situation, but still holdable, I would say. By in many ways, he, I think he can hold this. So it's all about patience. And Arjun is a very good defender as well. So I'm I'm thinking that Arjun might be able to hold this. What about Surya Ganguly against Murzin? Uh -huh. Surya is a pawn up, but black has strong knight and also f4 is hanging. So if you take on f4, I go king b4, king b5 and take here. This is all three results possible, guys. All three results possible here. Like rook f4, king b4, king b5, king takes is a threat. Yeah. Uh, rest, uh, let's just have a quick look at what is the, when is the rest day? Because some of you said tomorrow, some of you said day after tomorrow. But I will confirm by looking at the official website as to when is the rest day. 24th is the rest day. So tomorrow there is a, there is a game, Sunday. Sam Shanklin takes on Carlson. It's Ram it's pra Pragnananda versus <coughs> Mamed Yarov. And Vidit takes on Nils Grandelia. So tomorrow is a good chance for Vidit to make a comeback and you know make amends for his loss today. Anish takes on Asipenko tomorrow. Yeah. So I guess I'll call it a night today because I think uh, I'm also very tired. I have been also tested positive for COVID and I need to take some rest. Also, uh, it was a very interesting round today. I know Arjun's game is, but it'll go on for another few hours. Uh, and uh, before I leave, I just want to inform you that there is some sale that is going on on Chessbase India. It's called the Great Republic Day Sale from 21st to 28th. The first link in the description tells you all about it. You can get any two Chessbase India t-shirts and one free on that. You can get more details in the link, which ones you can buy, which ones not. And there's also Vedika's chocolates offer until 28th. So in case if you need buy three, get one free, you can check that out. Uh, also, that uh, Vedika chocolates and t-shirts are in the first link. And if you want to get Chessbase 16 and Mega Database, which is very useful uh, for all the analysis that we are doing, that is the second link in the description. And if you want the chess set, the Chessbase India premium chess set, which is really very cool, then that is the third link in the description. Uh, if you have ever wanted to own a uh, real chess set then please do check it out um, today was a very very exciting day for tata steel but for india it was a tough day and i have we have a super chat by srinivasan gopalan who says after king b5 knight d5 another pawn hanging uh, after king b5 knight d5 which game ah you mean you mean this one of surya ganguly king b5 you mean maybe you mean knight e4 here take this i think surya will be able to hold this but could also start pushing, yeah, here. I guess it's not easy for Murzin. Ah, people are saying you want round up, yeah. Okay, let's do a round up then before I leave. Knight d7. Yeah, Srinivasan Gopalan. Uh, 
knight d7 king c here and then see the main thing is that even if you lose a file like for example king b5 if you went knight d7 then uh king c6 knight e5 king b6 already gets slightly tricky you know here because firstly uh, if you give a check i can block with the knight and secondly my pawn is very strong so even if you can win all these pawns and you have three passers they're still very far behind while the white pawn is very quick to advance also this pawn is quick to advance so i have a feeling that here because of the white king's activity murzin needs to play carefully now yes he might he might have good chance like for the, yeah it's important if i take here you take here i take on b6 you take on c4 king c5 and even if you play knight d2 it's wondering ah okay there is knight b3 check so i can't push a4 for now but let's say king b6 and i think white has enough to keep the balance here should be a draw surya will be able to hold this okay so um couple of things before i leave i'll i'll do the round up so that people can check it out later and uh, let me prepare the you know when you have this kind of uh, very nice performance where you didn't lose any game and then you lose one game uh, it it does get a bit like you know why did i it can either go really in a bad way because you were playing so solidly that a loss you are not mentally ready for it or you can just shrug off that defeat and you can say to yourself that okay i'm going to come back tomorrow let's see what with it which way he he goes but let's start with the game of with it in our roundup <laughs> so with it played against jordan and with it had the black pieces it was a nimzo indian and uh, b6 was played and with it played bishop b7 which is much less common than bishop a6 Knight e5 was again a new idea by Jordan, and you know somehow the opening went, I would say, quite well for Black. Although here knight d3 would have given White a great position. Jordan went knight c4, and every time you know Jordan started to get a good position, he would not find the most precise way. Like here, f4 was better, but he went queen b3. With it went queen e6, f4. Finally, he took here. And this is the moment where we were discussing, right? That with it, uh, Jordan had to play rook f d four, give up this pawn, and play for more activity. But he went bishop f two, and I think after queen f seven, bishop c eight, knight e six, it felt like with it was under complete control here. And I think now, if with it was given this position, he he might have decided to do this way. Although I'm I'm not sure. Like even this position is not so simple. Maybe rook d8. You start off, put pressure here, <coughs> provoke e4, then go queen c7, taking control of the c file. So with it had defensive chances, but he kept the bishop here on the board, and then after bishop f4, g5, bishop c7. Good move by Jordan. And I think the last mistake. Happened here, which was in, he could have gone rook f8, and after e6, queen e5, and I guess chances of this ending in a draw were very high. This position, uh, yeah, most likely a draw. But with it went really. Uh, this was something that will re impact him because rook c8 was a mistake, and after queen e6. Bishop f3, knight c5, bd5. This was just over. Take, take, rook f7, and sack. Bishop e6 resigns. So that is how Vidit lost. Pragnananda versus Carlson. 
Prague was maybe the first, this is the first classical over the board game of Prague and Carlsen. And uh, this is how it went. It was a Queen's Gambit accepted. Prague played an interesting opening, got a small edge. What more can you ask against the world champion? Uh, somewhere I think he got a little bit confused with the different plans here. He went Queen E2 and E4. And Magnus played all these calm moves, little moves. He he knew that Prague will go wrong somewhere. And here after Knight D5, Rook D5, Queen E6, Prague had to take Knight C5. If he had taken Knight C5, he would have had good chances to hold. But he played the move. Uh, rook a d1 and after rook a8 fantastic move threatening c4 so he went here but then e4 fell and i think the rest of the game uh, carlson played well but after c4 there was another chance here with bishop takes g7 uh, and this is how the game could have become really complicated <coughs> uh, i mean we we analyzed this this variation which was interesting where you go here, 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 uh, knight f8, rook catch 4, queen e5, uh, rook d5, queen g7, rook g5, knight g6, take, take, and rook c4. Something like this, you know, just as an example. And some drawing chances did exist for Prague, but not much. He went like queen d4. And Magnus once again found the best move, knight f6. And if you take on a7, then I take on d5. <laughs> so he played knight b6, c3, exchanges all around, and rook e2 with the idea of knight c3. Carlsen had beaten Prague. Richard Rapport versus Mamed Yaro was a quick draw, was a fighting game, but a draw. Uh, Esipenko versus Sam Shanklin still going on and should end in a draw here. But we'll see right now black is a pawn down but has very good active pieces. Duda versus Karuana, crazy game, completely crazy. Uh, engines assessing it as equal but who knows what will happen. Nils Grandelius versus Sergei Karyakin was a draw. And Anish Giri versus Daniel Dubo. Anish played d4, Daniel didn't turn up because... Daniel, one of the people in his team uh, has had COVID, so he was asked to wear a mask today to the game. Daniel said that it doesn't fit his kind of understanding that he should wear a mask to the game. So he declined, he didn't turn up for the game and so Anish got the full point here. So as of now, these are the standings. In the master section, we have Magnus Carlsen now at the top with five points out of seven. Uh, we have Chakriyar on four and a half, Anish, Rapport and Vidit on joint third with four. Magnus has become the sole leader. Esipenko might draw and join everyone else at four. Uh, Jordan uh, is on three and a half, Sergey on three and a half, two down three. So this is how it is. Prague has lost today against Carlson, but he's playing well in the tournament. He's fighting hard and uh, clearly not looking like the last seed in this event. Um, yeah, before we just end this, Arjun Erigesi, the leader of the challenger section, uh, is playing with Jumabayev Rinath and Arjun has a slightly inferior position right now, but I think he should be able to hold this position um, and would move to six points. Surya Ganguly should also be able to hold this against Volodar Murzin. So two draws here maybe and two losses in the Masters section. So this was the roundup. This is all from here from Sagar Shah. Uh, do check out our links in the description for our Republic Day sale. Uh, until then, guys, thank you all for following this and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye. Take care.